AGI is nigh. Don't tell the doomers. I slowed down my AI research just a little bit and I come back around to see that the excitement over Deep Seek has not faded. It's only picked up. Here is a tweet or X post from Clem, the CEO of Hugging Face, who says there are so many derivatives of Deep Seek available on Hugging Face right now. This is not another one of those fads that gets lost in the constant sea of AI developments. This one is sticking. The Deep Seek app has surpassed ChatGPT and store downloads in one week. This has gotten so mainstream that even CNBC has done a segment on it. They had to restrict logins because the app got attacked. The website is doing okay though and it's pretty crazy. They also discussed issues of censorship because this is a Chinese model so they're not allowed to talk about certain political things or train that data into a model. Uh, they also talked in this uh, segment here about open source being a possible security threat when models are released that way but I disagree. Going all the way back to the 1990s when I was a teenager and first got into Linux I started to notice early on how when there's a security problem or any other bug it gets fixed pretty fast and open source exposes security vulnerabilities quickly and they get addressed. Watch me in a separate video where I will react to the CNBC segments. The popularity of Deep Seek has even reached the White House. The president spoke about it during a speech. I'm not going to get political or into opinions here. I'm just saying it reached that far. Unfortunately, there was no specific mention of open source, even though I would have liked to have heard that because I think just on principle, it's important. And if we embrace open source from government policy, or at least from businesses who want to make models that are completely open, it avoids the issue of espionage because if everything is open, there's no secrets to steal. Open source AI models also are just a good contribution to humanity because it helps us research and grow and learn about the advantages and the safety concerns. When any program becomes popular, hackers try to attack it. There was a massive cyber attack on the DeepSeek app and they had to halt new logins on the app even though you can get in through the web page, but they have not released any details specifically about what the attack was, and the source on this is The Guardian. Don't worry, there's light at the end of the tunnel, there's a happy ending to this, just two more segments to go, you'll see. But first, something a little crazy, the DeepSeek app launch actually triggered a $1 trillion sell-off in stocks. Nvidia saw a record $465 billion loss in their stock value, and that's a 17% drop. Investors feared that this could interfere with the U.S. dominance in AI, but I think that was a big mistake because a model like this was trained on NVIDIA GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs are used to run it, so I just don't think that really tracks or makes sense and maybe the investors just didn't understand enough about AI. No matter who wins in making models, NVIDIA wins in the compute and the hardware. The stock thing was probably just a glitch, but there is some good news for the open source community. This is so cool. There are multiple ways that R1 is actually affecting the development of other AI systems. So for one thing, Open source AI developers have been able to pull the chain of thought process out of R1 and distill it and use it to turn other models into reasoning models, as I had mentioned before. And Technium One, the head of post training at Noose Research, is actually experimenting with that right now. One challenge they've run into, though, is expanding the context length of the model to handle the length from the chain of thought. Technium One has also been mentioning for a couple of years now that he's really a proponent of synthetic data. And you might think, why? It's just going to be the same information that people made to train AI. And it's because it can generate the formatting of the data in a way that's more digestible for an AI to train from, and it becomes more efficient that way. Some developers have figured, why not use O1 to generate synthetic data? It has deeper reasoning and the data will be smarter. Well, that's true, but with DeepSeek, the cost of this is 80 to 90% less than O1. So you can imagine that some of these developers are really in a race to grab the data. And besides the chain of thought data and the synthetic data generation, R1 actually uses a reinforcement learning system that's more efficient than others. Reinforcement learning is where you give the neural network some examples of things until it eventually kind of gets it and then you don't have to give it examples anymore. In short, oversimplifying here, R1 needs fewer examples of what to learn from than other models do before it gets it and understands things. Well, that's the end of my video. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I have a feeling you should stay tuned for more because I thought this would be like another thing where I make a video about it and move on to the next thing, but this is still going on and I have a feeling a lot more to come. Please click the like button if you found some value in this and also please subscribe if you want to hear more about this and other open source models and little open source AI projects that I come across. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.